Hi everyone, you are with uh, Kirsty McConnell of the Pet Photographers Club and... Hi, it's Caitlin here. <laughs> uh, we are joining you to share our top tips for how to win this year's award since entries are now open for the International Pet Photographer of the Year Awards. Yeah, if you haven't already entered, it's super simple. Just head to thepetphotographersclub.com slash awards. Um, but we're about to go through our top 10 tips. There are four main categories that your images go into for the awards. So we've got the portrait category, the action category, pets and their people, and open. Jump over to thepetphotographersclub.com if you want to have a look at the previous year's winners. We have those up there. If you are a member of the Pet Photographers Club, you can also view the shortlist so we do a top 100 and a top 25 shortlist so you can view the shortlist from the previous year uh, in the member zone so that's that can also be handy if you're listening to the audio version of us chatting right now by the way there is a video version of this so you can have a look at what we're talking about if we're confusing you by saying hey this is this photo <laughs> You can you can have a look at what we're actually referring to as well. But sh should we dive into what we mean by these four categories, Kirst? Yes, definitely. Okay, well, let's start with portrait. So this category encompasses everything. So from the studio to outdoors, from single pets to group photos, from really intimate close-ups to wider environmental portraits, the one thing that all of these images have in common is that they're all striving to capture the essence of the animal being photographed. And that's what we're looking for in the portrait category. Action is obviously about capturing that movement. So whether it's running, jumping, swimming, playing, capturing the movement is a huge part of pet photography and the service that we provide to our clients. So it's something that we really wanted to celebrate. Now, again, all of these categories are open to interpretation. If you're watching the video version of this, you can see the top 100 scrolling by my screen. And there are just so many different photographic interpretations of that one theme. Really the only thing that all these different images have in common is the fact that they are capturing some sort of movement through the frame. So the third option is pets and their people, um, exactly as the name says. If there is a human in the shot, most likely it belongs in this category. Now, that's not to say that humans can't be present in the other categories. In fact, from memory, I'm pretty sure that three out of four of the top category winners last year featured humans. Uh, the difference here is that the photograph really is focused on celebrating that bond between the pets and their people. So it can be something a little bit more abstract or it can be more of that classic client and pet portrait. You could be working with children or capturing those adventures. It can be funny, intimate, sad. The focus here is celebrating that really special bond between the pet and their person. And then finally, the open category. We get a lot of questions about the open category and what is and isn't allowed to be submitted there. And the truth is, it's pretty much anything. Our open category is there to celebrate creativity and everything that a photograph can be. So it's including, but definitely not limited to composites, digital manipulation, uh, interesting photographic editing styles. You might have got really creative with the theme or the concept, or it could just be something that doesn't quite fit into one of the other categories, or it's just another one of your very favorite images that you want to enter. Again, it doesn't have to be wild with the Photoshop work to be entered in the open category. Basically, open is whatever you want it to be. If you're unsure which category to put your image in, um, go with your gut or reach out to other photographers that you know, bounce ideas around, just use your, your instinct. If you, if you look at it and you know it's a portrait, it goes in portrait. If you're unsure, probably it goes in open. Um, so tip number two, how the awards are judged. Now we're going to go through specifically the criteria um, and the scoring and everything just to make everything really clear for you guys. So criteria one is technical. So technical scored out of 10. And we're talking here about things like your exposure, your editing, focus, lighting, that less subjective side of photography, I suppose. Criteria two is visual, which is also scored out of 10. So we're talking here about the aesthetic impact of the image, 
the creativity involved in the editing, the composition, um, how the photograph looks as a whole. And then finally, with criteria three, we have the judge's response. Now this one's scored out of five. So we're talking here about that really subjective response to the photograph. So the emotion, the mood, the creativity, the originality, this aspect of the judging is the whole reason why we have a large panel of judges because Kirsty and I recognize that there is that really subjective, um, you know, emotive reaction to photographs. So it's important that we have all different pet photographers from around the world judging your photographs. I, I know we were chatting about this when we did our peer review. A lot of people were saying, you know, oh, at the moment, this particular style is like um, in fashion. And so should I stop bothering if my image isn't edited in that style? And I just want to clarify that like definitely still enter it, no matter if it's in trend style or not. Like Caitlin just said, there are judges from all over the world um, that are all chosen as judges because of their um, their knowledge of photography. And so they can look at it with neutral eyes. Um, and so editing styles, which I've just mentioned this because it was a big discussion point, just takes up one little fraction of judges' response, which is just one little fraction. So no matter what kind of style you shoot in, please enter anyway. That's the whole reason that we have the judges' response is just five points and um, also the panel of judges as taken. Um, our tip number three is to read the rules. So when you head over to the petphotographersclub.com forward slash awards, first of all, I want to point out that you will see the entry deadline there. Now, as an international awards, we have people with all different time zones entering from all around the world. Please, please, please convert the time zone for the entry deadline to your own time zone. Every year it happens that people just assume the entry deadline is in their own time zone or they don't do that conversion and then they leave it to last minute and they miss out. So that's just my first little tip is convert that time zone for yourself. And then the second thing you need to do is click on the entry form button and you will see all of the rules, guidelines, terms and conditions, everything that you need to know before entering the awards. Please understand, if you haven't followed the rules, you will be disqualified. The three most common reasons we see entries get disqualified are you've included your watermark or logo on the image. Because judging is anonymous, we have to disqualify these images. You have submitted the entry form more than once. The system's going to automatically disqualify you if you do that or you have submitted more than one image per category. Again, you'll automatically be disqualified there. So just remember no watermarks, one entry form, four images in total, one per category. So that is one, one image per category. You can enter one portrait, one action, one pets and their people, one open. And all your categories should be submitted in one single entry form. Again, multiple entry forms will get you disqualified. So please read the rules. They're really simple. They're all there and we put them there to make it really easy for you guys and to make it fair for everybody else. That's the whole point. And also there aren't hidden extra rules. We promise. <laughs> yes, so we, we get point. a lot of people emailing and messaging saying, is this against the rule or is that against the rule? If it's not on the guidelines, it's not against the rules. Number four, trust your gut instinct. Yes, I mentioned that briefly in at the start um, when I mentioned if you're not sure which category to enter in, just go with your gut instinct. That goes for not just categories but everything. There's an image that you shot six months ago. By the way, back to rules just quickly. There is no – it doesn't have to be shot in the last 12 months or anything like that. There's no time limit on your entry. So um, anyway, back to gut instinct. If you, uh, you know, shot an image six months ago and it's still in your head – probably a good indication that that's a good image to enter. So that's when we say like, trust your gut. If you love it, enter it. If you've had lots of good feedback on it, enter it. We interviewed some of the winners from last year and quite a few of them gave that as one of their top tips for what to choose when entering the awards is just to pick the 
images that you personally respond to. Um, number five is to check out last year's winners. So as we said, you can jump onto the website, thepetphotographersclub.com forward slash awards. And as I mentioned, if you are a member of the Pet Photographers Club, then you can jump into the member zone and have a look at, at the previous year's shortlist. So that can be really helpful too. Again, don't get intimidated by it. That's another thing that was common in all of our interviews with previous winners is they were all saying, I had no idea I was ever going to win. I entered it a fluke. I didn't expect to get through. Um, so yeah, don't let yourself get swayed, but I definitely think it's helpful to check last year's winners. Uh, number six, bringing a fresh perspective to the category. Honestly, the thing to remember here is that there are over a thousand images entered into these awards. More and more get entered every year. So if your image looks similar to one that the judges have seen a hundred, 200 times before, it's going to be really difficult for that to sort of break through and be memorable. It's not going to get a wow. And remember that five of the points out of your 25 are um, judges response. And it's like, oh yeah, I just saw that image before. You're not going to get marked down on it, but you won't get extra points in that five. So that's when like bringing that fresh perspective to the category is going to really give you those extra points in that judge's response. Now, that being said, don't feel like, oh, well, I'm not even going to bother entering because I don't have any unique perspective on action photography. I would absolutely still enter what you your proudest action photo is mm -hmm. um, because your overall score will be brought up by that. So don't, don't, don't let us now like freak you out with our everything has to be really unique. Um, but yeah, as Kirsty said, if you can find any little twist on a category um, that will make your image more memorable or just a, just a little bit different from what you imagine we're seeing 800 times before, <laughs> um, then that will give you that little bit of an edge, which does bring us perfectly to tip number seven, which is to enter all four categories. So as I just said, even if you don't feel that confident with your action shot um, or you think oh, this is just like this action shot is nothing special. I don't normally shoot action. I would still recommend entering it. So basically the um, International Pet Photographer of the Year is the pet photographer that is entered and has the combined highest scoring points. Okay. So just think of it like that. If you only enter three, the maximum you can get is 75 points, 25 per three images. But if you enter four, the maximum you can get is a hundred points. Even if one doesn't do that well, you still might've got like 75 points from your three that do well. Mm -hmm. And then an extra 10 and 85 points might be enough to be the highest scoring. So enter all four, because if you don't, you're not in the running to be the international picture of the year. You can still become the category winner, which is awesome. You can still place in the top 25 or in the top 100, which is also awesome. Um, but like we always say, you've got to be in it to win it. And, uh, the best way to be in it towards being the international pet of the year is to enter all four categories. Tip number eight, master technique. Back to the judges criteria. Um, remember that we spoke about technique being worth 10 points. So, you know, look at the basic principles of photography. Is it sharp? Are the eyes in focus? You know, if they're not supposed to be because it's actually a close-up of a nose, well, that's a different story. But hitting as many of the technical things as you can is definitely going to bring up going to bring up your score. I would say that um, the technical criteria is the uh, quickest way that images don't make it through to the top 100 shortlist. That's true, yeah. Because there's like, you know, the thousands, thousands of photos. So in the first run through of judging, I think um, a lot of what doesn't make it through there is a lot of that is based on it not hitting those technical things, mm -hmm. especially like as Percy was saying, focus is a huge one. And actually you just mentioned something that I think is good, like worth mentioning a bit more about sharpening. So just keep in mind that if you normally add sharpening to your image in post because you print, uh, this is a digital entry. And so on screen, it's going, it often looks as over sharpening, which you probably know if you're sharpening your images for print. Um, but just keep in mind, nobody's looking at these as prints. 
we're looking at them as digital and so make sure that the, the sharpening is done accordingly. Tip number nine is to involve your community. So we see some pet photographers out there who are utilizing the awards as a way to generate a little bit of buzz in their own local community. You get badges um, as you enter the awards and then if you make it into any of the shortlists as well. So they're already a fun way to just talk to your community, to your clients about what you're doing. But another really fun way that we've seen people uh, involve their own community is, you know, asking for, for your clients advice or opinions on images you know this or that shall I enter this one or that one in action doesn't mean you have to follow them but it is a really great way to get them really excited um, and following along your journey and then when you get the opportunity to announce that you've made it through to the next round that kind of thing then that can be even more exciting for everyone who got involved in the first place you know the more opinions you get the more feedback you get the more you can kind of decide what works for you and what doesn't and you can go from there so get them involved whether you plan on listening or not um it's a fun exercise so yeah, yeah. Go for a bit it. of engagement never hurt anyone's social media did it guys <laughs> <laughs> and then finally tip number 10 we probably sound like a broken record because we say this all the time but you have to be in it to win it you lose nothing from entering these awards thanks to the generosity of our sponsors and our judges these awards are totally free for you to enter i don't know how many photography awards are free to enter i remember when i used to <laughs> enter the australian professional photography of the year awards i used to, I used to budget a thousand dollars every year to enter those awards and these ones are completely free um and it's just so nice to be involved because you know it really gets you inspired by you know getting the email updates of like um, the release of the top 100, the top 25, like this kind of thing. Jump on the website, have a look um, because there are some, yeah, really great uh, prizes in there to be won. Plus, you you know, you might just be able to say, I'm the international pet photographer of the year internationally. Like, how cool is that? So you've got to be in it to win it. And as we already said, all of the previous year's winners, um, so many of the shortlist photographers who've heard the same thing. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that I actually won or that I placed. I wasn't expecting this at all. You absolutely never know. Um, so you do have to be in it to win it. I can't recommend it enough. I also think it's quite a, as, as we, you know, we do this annually now, it's becoming a nice opportunity to sit down and reflect on your own portfolio and your own style and where you're going and have a look dive back into your archives see what it is that you want to do creatively with your photography I just feel like it, you can use these as a sort of um, anniversary of sorts to look through your portfolio I've heard a few people taking that op opportunity to do that so I really like hearing that as well that looking outside of the idea of like oh like the awards and winning the prizes and everything it's just a nice opportunity to touch base with yourself and your business again mm -hmm. and also to connect with everyone else in the community so we've got the mastermind group but there's also the free pet photographers club group that you're more than welcome to come and join it gets really really exciting around award season as everyone shares um you know their thoughts and whether or not they've been shortlisted all that kind of stuff so we'd be so happy to have you in there as well if you're not there yet yes and that's everything for today that we want to say i think that's a really good point to finish on um caitlin that yeah do it for yourself um just as a chance to go through so thanks for joining us today good luck guys that's what we want to say good luck and um so excited to so excited to see awesome thanks guys